Hi everybody and welcome to Cap at Home. I'm Miss Allie and today we are going to be making red, white, and blue pinwheel spinners. They work a lot better when you're outside in the wind. Um, but we have, for the 4th of July coming up this weekend, we have the option of making our red, white, and blue fun, colorful ones. And these are kind of fun because they definitely move and they are made from our household materials. So what we're going to need today is some paper. Um, if you are going to be using printer paper, then you are going to need two sheets because it is a little thinner. If you're going to be using construction paper, one piece of paper is fine, or if you have thicker paper, one is fine, or you can use two to get two different colors, up to you. We're going to need some scissors and a glue stick or tape, and then we're going to need some markers to decorate. You can also use colored pencils or crayons, and some push pins, thumbtacks, um, anything that has a point at the end to be able to push through. Um, you can also use safety pins, anything that's kind of sharp, and a pencil that has an eraser on the top. All right, and I'll show you how to make these, so let's get started. So I have my printer paper with me, so I'm going to take my piece of paper, and what you want to do is fold it to the edge, because we need to make a square, and I have a rectangle piece of paper. So if you already have some square paper, you can actually just skip this step. So we're gonna fold it like that, so the paper goes to the edge, like that. So it's, sort of, it's gonna create a square. So this extra piece down here, we have to cut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and just cut along that edge. You can also fold this over, make a line if you want to cut along the fold, up to you. I just go ahead and cut along that side like that. So now we have a square. So I'm going to set my scrap paper aside, and I have one crease down the middle. So I actually want to fold this the other way to make a crease going so it would make a crease going this way. So I have crossing folds. So if I have it folded like this, then I want to open it up and fold it the other direction. I'm going to make sure my two edges meet at the top. I want to make sure I have a good fold. All right. So if you open it back up, you can see that there are folds going all the way across. So this is going to be our lines for our pinwheel spinner. So when we um, are going to cut on these lines, let's make sure that you have a really good crease. So what you actually want to do at this point is decorate it before we cut or do anything else. Um, now I'm going to be using markers and since this is printer paper, I actually have two pieces of paper and this is why. So I decorated one half because if you do two sides of your paper, it looks really cool. So on this side, on one piece of paper, I have one design. On the other piece of paper, I have a second design. So it looks really interesting when it's folded over. And that's why we do that with the two designs. But for using printer paper, if you see this piece of paper, the side I drew on, this side the marker bled through. So that's why we use two pieces so you don't see the bleed through on the back. So I have one half already done, so I'm going to decorate this one with you guys. So again, I've already folded my creases, now I want to decorate. And since I'm making a pinwheel for this weekend, for the holiday weekend, I'm going to use my um, red and blue colors on my white paper. So you can decorate however you want, if you want to add different design shapes, patterns, or if you want to draw something specific, but do remember that they will be folded over so you might not see the whole page at one time. So I like to do different patterns. And so if you can see, we have one area. So there's technically four areas divided up by this paper. So you could de decorate each, different, each area a different way. So let's say I start drawing. Let's say I want to do some stars maybe. And again, you can decorate this however you want to. 
and I'm using marker but you can also use colored pencils or crayons and I'm making mine for the holiday weekend 4th of July coming up, but you can decorate it however you want. This is kind of fun. This is kind of a relaxing part of this project to just go ahead and draw. You can even use, if you have white paper, you can use that. If you have colored construction paper, you can use that. If you have like patterned scrapbook paper or um, any like paper that has designs on it, that could be really cool to use as well. So anything like that could be cool for this project. And again, I'm making mine for the 4th of July, red, white, and blue, but you can decorate it however you want. If you have a theme that you want to make, like maybe your favorite video game, or if a favorite character of a show, or an animal that you really like, you could decorate it like that. It could also just be fun designs and shapes. Some patterns if you want. It could be cool to alternate patterns. Let's say one side you had stripes and the other side you had like circle shapes, like organic shapes. That could look really cool. You could also do it where one side that you decorate is all warm colors. So your red, orange, and yellow. And then your other side could be all the cool colors. Blue, purple, and green. And that could look really awesome too. So as you can see, I'm kind of going around and making, so I did one side blue, one side red, so I'll probably do blue and red there too. I'm just adding some stars on here. And you can take your time with this. Don't, uh, don't feel like you have to rush. Take your time, really add in some details. My other one, the stripes that I did, takes a little bit longer to do, but it looks really cool if you take the time to do it. Now you can take these and put them outside. You can hold them, run around with them. It's cool when you can take something outside that you made yourself and actually use it. And since the decorating part takes the longest, the actual making of it doesn't take that long. You could make a couple of different ones, give them to your family members, you could even take old drawings that you've done before and use these to make your um, to make your decorations for this project. If you say, let's say you had like an old drawing, you wanted to cut it into a square and do that, that would totally work too. So I think the more detail, the more energy you put into it, uh, the better they look. Again, I'm just kind of adding some stars, just decorating. And I'm going to mention this right now before I forget. We are actually doing a um, new thing for Cap at Home. So if you've participated in this project or any other project beforehand, um, we are going to be accepting pictures of projects that you've done before. You can send it to our email, which is in the um, comments, which is in the um, written part of this video. So it's going to be cap at college for creative studies edu. And if you email us any picture of a project that you've completed from cap at home, you have the chance for that to be in a submission for a magazine or even shared on any of our social media pages. So if you've participated in our projects lately, then I suggest you send us your pictures for a chance to be featured in a magazine and on our page. So make sure to do that if you have been participating with us. We always love to see what you've been creating. I'm just kind of filling in some of the white space here. I think the more um, that you fill in the space, I think it looks better the more a uh, white space that you fill in. Again, you can spend a good some good time on this. 
take your time, really add in some designs, fill up the page, make it a real piece of artwork. All right. So I have these kind of fun stars that I have. And again, so I had these, I, you have this paper that's divided up by your fold. So I did each one a little bit differently, but that's totally up to do, up to you. You could make it the whole piece kind of like one design if you want. So sort of like this. So again, I use printer paper. The markers kind of bleed through like this. So that's why I have two sheets and you just want to go ahead and glue these together. So take your glue stick. Um, if you have tape, you can also use this too use that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue the edges of this. All right. And then I'm going to glue my one side on top of the other. So it's sort of like making double sided paper. And again, I did this because the markers kind of bleed through. If you're using um, some heavier paper, or if you're not using markers, if you're using colored pencils or crayons, then you don't necessarily have to do this step. Make sure it's smoothed down, get it best lined up as you can. So that way you can't see as much on the other side. So if you glue your two pieces together, you wanna reinforce those folds. So again, you're gonna fold in half, make sure that crease is really good and then do the same on the other side. So you have a fold on both sides. And I do that so it makes sure that each fold is really good so you can see the creases a little bit better. And if you get like this, we're saying one paper might be a little bit longer than the other, you can go ahead and just cut that little excess paper off. It's really not a big deal. Um, it's not gonna affect your project or anything, but if it, bugs you, you can just go ahead and cut that little strip off so it's aligned. Um, like I said, it's really not a big deal. It's not going to affect the project or anything. It's just your preference. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure it's totally even like that. All right, so I have two sides and I have reinforced my folds. Now what I want to do is on my folds, I want to take a marker or a pencil mark the very center with a dot like that and then what we're going to do we're actually going to cut along this line maybe about three quarters of the way to that middle dot and so that's going to allow us to create our fold so i like to sort of make some marks along that fold they don't have to be perfect or exactly the same place but if you go around and kind of i do it like this so i put a dot here roll my hand across, put a dot here. So it's sort of like making a little box and that's like your marker or your line that you're going to cut to. And I'll show you why. So on these folded creases, you're gonna go ahead and cut a straight line, cut to that dot. And you're gonna do that on all four sides. All right. Okay, now we have this little piece, like I said, we're not cutting directly into the middle. And this is how we fold in our, the wheels, basically the uh, part that makes the air go through to make it a spinning pinwheel. So that's what we're gonna end up doing. So first you wanna decide which side you want to be the, uh, the back. So this side I have one design, this side you see a lot of the other design. So decide which, how you want to fold it in. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's totally up to you and your preference. So let's say I wanted to see this part and I wanted to fold these in, the stars in. So I might do that. So you might want to, again, if you choose to do the other way, mark a dot in the very middle. And you're going to fold one um, one corner of each triangle in towards the middle and you want to place it on top of that dot. So you can use glue um, or tape to go ahead and do this. And you're going to have to really hold it down when you do this. Make sure it sticks. And every time you glue one side down, you got to glue, put a little bit more glue down. So if I folded this top corner in, 
then I have to do the same. Okay. And again, I'm adding glue in between each, pressing down really good to make sure it sticks. And you're only doing one uh, side of the triangle per section. So there should be four folds in. And you're just kind of placing the edges right on top of each other. So it sort of looks like this and I'm pressing it down. So one side has one design, one side has the other. And I'm gonna hold it down for a second here to make sure the glue sticks. All right, so when you have that completed, so you have all four folds. So again, one part of each triangle folded to the middle. So that's four folds like this. That's when we need to attach it to our pencil. So this is why we have a pencil. So I use a pencil to attach on the other side with my um, push pin, anything again that you have like this. So it can be any color that you have. And this, you might want to have an adult help you. Make sure not to poke yourself. So if I have my push pin, I'm going to push it directly into the center. See how my fingers are on the side like this? So that's to make sure I can help the paper go through, but I'm not going to push pin, poke myself, poke my finger. So sometimes you might need to twist it a little bit to get it to go through the paper. Again, if you need help, ask an adult. And it might take you a second to get it through. And if you use two layers of paper, that's when it gets a little bit more difficult. All right, okay, so here's my push pin. It has gone through to the other side. This is where we take our pencil. We're gonna use our eraser. We're actually gonna push our push pin through into that eraser top. And we actually wanna make sure that the push pin doesn't go all the way through and here's why. So first, you don't want to push your push pin all the way through because you don't want to poke yourself. But also, you need to leave a little bit of space in between the eraser and the push pin on your paper so that it can actually spin. So we do this because we have this at home. You can use anything that you have available to you. But this is how you create your pinwheel spinner. So these areas are the actual like pockets that make um, it possible to move. So if you were to blow air in those pockets, it makes it spin. Oh, yep. So then you can take it outside and you can blow and you can use your own pinwheel spinner. So these are kind of fun. Again, I did mine like a sort of 4th of July themed. I have a couple other examples over here. So this one is an example of if I use, if say you had some um, fun pattern paper, you don't even have to draw on it. I had two different colors of paper. I glued them together and did the exact same process. So this is a little bigger. You can cut it down to make it a size that you like. Again, you saw the other red, white, and blue um, designed patterned one. So I have two of these fun little designs. Again, you can draw anything that you want on them. And again, you can use colored paper if you have that as well. It doesn't have to be designed or anything. You can just have two different colors of paper. So when you've completed your pinwheel spinner, you want to make sure that you clean up. So make sure your glue stick has a cap on it. Make sure all your markers have caps on them. And any scraps that you had, you want to make sure that you throw away. And if there's anything... Um, scrap paper that you can save for a different project so like your one sheet from the beginning you can keep that and when your table looks as clear as it was when we started then you are ready to play with your pinwheel spinners again take them outside um, go in front of a fan and watch them move it is very fun um, thank you again for watching this Cap at Home video. I'm Miss Allie, and make sure to watch our other Cap at Home videos at 1 and 2 p.m. today. And if you're looking for any of our other Cap at Home videos, make sure to check out our library of videos 
which we have on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channel. And again, make sure to submit your images to any images that you've um, of projects that you've made for any CAP at Home project. Make sure to submit those to our email. Um, cap at college for creative studies edu again we're going to post about that later for a chance to be um, put into a magazine subscription as well as posted on our um, social media pages thanks for watching